Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using moment distribution method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, we have the columns AB and CD and the beam BC. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam BC, we have a uniformly distributed load. 4 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. In the point B, we have a nodal point load 12 kN. It is acting towards the right side. For the columns, the moment of inertia is 4i and for the beam, it is 1.5i. Height of the columns are 4 meter. Length of the beam is 6 meter. This is a sway type frame. Because of this load, there will be sway. This load is acting towards the right side. So the sway will occur towards the right side. Since this frame is a sway type frame, we have to do the analysis two times. First, non-sway analysis and then sway analysis. Now, let us start the non-sway analysis. In this analysis, we assume that in the point C, there is a roller support to avoid the sway. In the moment distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. To find the distribution factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with the roller support, the formula is 3EA upon L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EA upon L. In this frame, both of the ends are fixed. The points B and C are continuous. So, for the stiffness of BA, BC, CB and CD, we have to use the same formula for EA upon L. First, let us find the stiffness for BA. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia is 4i. So, in the formula, instead of i, we have to apply 4i. After calculation, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting 4ei. Now, let us find the stiffness for BC. Length of BC is 6. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for BC is 1.5i. After calculation, for the stiffness of BC, we are getting ei. We know that the stiffness of BC and CB will be same. Now let us find the stiffness for CD. Length of CD is 4. The moment of inertia for CD is 4i. After the calculation, we are getting 4ei. Now let us find sigma k. In the joint B, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 5ei. In the joint C, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 5EI. Now, let us find the distribution factors. The formula is K upon sigma K. We have calculated the values of K and sigma K. Using the formula, we can find the distribution factors. Now, let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members, then let us enter the distribution factors, then the fixed end movements. Now let us do the first distribution. First let us do in the joint B. For that we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that, we are getting negative values, so we have to enter them in the table as positive. Now, let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that, we have to add these two values and then multiply with the distribution factors. When we do that, we are getting positive values, 
So we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Now let us do the second distribution. First let us do in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values so we have to enter them as positive. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values so we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Now let us do the third distribution. First let us do that in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting negative values so we have to enter them as positive. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors. When we do that we are getting positive values so we have to enter them as negative. Now let us do the carry over for that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Here I have done the fourth distribution. I am stopping in the fourth distribution because I am getting very smaller values. In the last distribution we should not give carry over to all the members. We have to give the carry over only to the fixed ends. Now let us add all of the values and find the final moments. Now let us find the sway force S. Yes. Suppose if we remove this point load, this frame becomes a non-sway type frame because it has symmetrical dimensions and a symmetrical loading. In this case, we can directly take this 12 kN as the sway force S yes, and it is acting towards the right side. We have finished the non-sway analysis. Let us start the sway analysis. In the sway analysis, we have to remove all of the loads from the frame. In the non-sway analysis, we knew that the sway occurs towards the right side. So in the sway analysis, we have to let the frame sway by delta towards the right side. Now let us find the ratio of the fixed end moments M of BA and M of CD. The formula to find the moments developed due to sway is 6EA delta upon L square since the sway occurs towards the right side. The moments developed due to sway will be negative. In the formula let us apply the values. Both of the columns are having the same height 4. Let us apply that. And both of the columns are having the same moment of inertia 4i. So in the formula instead of i we have to apply 4i. We can eliminate the numerator and denominator because both of them are same. We will get minus 1 upon minus 1. We should not eliminate the negative sign. We must let it be. Otherwise we will get incorrect answers. So in the column AB, the fixed end moments M of BA and M of AB will be minus 1. Also in the column CD, the fixed end moments M of CD and M of DC will be minus 1. We know that the beam is not affected by sway. So the fixed end moments in the beam are 0. Now let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table first let us enter all of the members. Then let us enter the distribution factors which we have calculated initially. 
then let us enter the fixed end movements now let us do the first distribution in the joint b for that we have to add these two fixed end movements and then multiply with the distribution factors when we do that we are getting negative values so we have to enter them inside the table as positive now let us do the distribution in the joint c for that we have to add these two values and then multiply with the distribution factors when we do that we are getting negative values so we have to enter them as positive now let us do the carry over for that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers now let us do the second distribution in the joint b for that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors when we do that we are getting positive values so we have to enter them as negative now let us do the second distribution in the joint c for that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factors when we do that we are getting positive values so we have to enter them as negative now let us do the carry over for that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers i have done up to the third distribution i have stopped in the third distribution because in the third distribution i am getting very smaller values we know that in the last distribution we have to give the carry over to the fixed ends now let us add all of the values and find the final movements now let us take the movements in ab and ba and find the horizontal reaction in the point a for the movements in ab and ba we have got negative values that means they are acting in the anti-clockwise direction let us assume that the horizontal reaction in the point A is acting towards the left side. Let us take moment A about B and find HA. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anti clockwise will be negative. HA is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is 4. So for HA, these two movements are acting in the anti-clockwise direction so both of them are negative after the calculation we are getting HA for HA we have got a positive value that means our assumption is correct HA is acting towards the left side now let us take the movements in CD and DC and find the horizontal reaction in the point D let us assume that HD is acting towards the left side. To find HD, let us take movement about C. Here we are moving backwards in the left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. HD is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be negative and the distance is 4. So minus 4 HD. These two movements are acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So both of them are positive. After the calculation, we are getting HD. For HD, we have got a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. It is acting towards the left side. Now let us apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0 and find the survey force S dash. The survey force S dash is acting towards the right side, so that will be positive. HA and HD are acting towards the left side, so both of them are negative. Finally, for S dash, we are getting 0.454 kN and it is acting towards the right side. Now, let us find the correction factor K. The formula is S upon S dash. We have calculated S yes and S yes dash. Let us apply them. After calculation for K, we are getting 26.4317. Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter the sway movements. 
then let us multiply the sway movements with the correction factor when we do that we will get these then let us enter the non-sway movements to get the real final movements we have to add these two values after adding we are getting the real final movements here you can see the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video